Hello all, welcome to Financial Express Online's uh, quick analysis of uh, budget. Uh, we have with us uh, uh, Ajay Sahani, partner infrastructure for uh, uh, at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas and we have Abhilash Pillai, partner real estate at Cyril Amarchand Mangaldas. Hi Shalin. Thank you uh, for being with us. Uh, Ajay, a uh, quick take, uh, a lot of it, uh, there was a lot of uh, expectation on the infrastructure fund that the government will do something. Has the budget met those expectations? Yes, uh, I think uh, budgets met a lot of those expectations. A very good budget in terms of uh, growth, a lot of push to infra spending. Uh, I think uh, the finer details are yet to be out, but uh, I think it's a it's a very progressive budget. Uh, it's it's fully supporting the growth, which will again then in turn support you know the demand side of the economy. A uh, lot of measures spoken about, a uh, lot of measures introduced which when uh, you know would uh, finally be put into play will have a you know a, a brilliant uh, effect on the growth of economy mm. so <clears throat> i think a couple of things a uh, uh, lot of focus given on road sector a lot of focus on ports a lot of uh, focus on power sector you know uh, the uh, incentivization on these sectors the introduction of a new dfi which of course uh, I've been I've been talking about in the past. You know, we we need our very own DFI, will, which will fund these long long gestation infrastructure projects, uh, coupled with uh, asset reconstruction, asset management company, which then takes out the stress from uh, the banks. The you know the stress assets uh, will be taken out. So it it gives you sort of new money as well as you know uh, uh, gives comfort to the existing commercial banks to lend more to the infrastructure sector. So there are a couple of announcements which 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 are very positive. I think uh, uh, the securities market core itself, you know, consolidation. If if you look at it, it will just uh, transform the entire uh, you know field. You will have you will have uh, <coughs> more uh, deeper uh, you know uh, more deeper uh, prospects around the equity as well as the debt side market. Uh, you will have. Uh, reach of people into this market which will again ultimately then support capitalization requirements of the com country so mm -hmm. uh, overall uh, I, I would say a very good budget before we get into specifics uh, same question uh, to you uh, abhilash uh, real estate same way uh, there were a lot of expectations that real estate is a demand multiplier uh, a force multiplier um, what has the budget done on the real estate sector well, uh, so far as the sector is concerned, uh, I do not think the budget meets uh, the emotions and sentiments of uh, the developers and, and the sector per se. Mm -hmm. uh, I was expecting uh, liberalized FDI uh, uh, construct and uh, a reduction of GST uh, on, on, on cement, uh, probably uh, a removal of GST on the commercial development. This would have uh, ensured that there will be more development on the commercial side. Uh, and uh, and and uh, fourthly, the uh, the GST set off uh, against the leasing uh, leasing business. That so these are the things you are saying did not happen. Did not happen. Yes. I was ex expecting these things to happen, but that did not happen. That's certainly a damn uh, Hopefully, uh, government will take care of that in the next budget or before that. What has happened for real estate? So, well. Uh, I think for the home buyers, especially uh, the affordable Different, home buyers, yes. it's a good thing because uh, the uh, the interest waiver, uh, the interest benefit which used to get 1.5 lakhs, that that time period has been extended till March 2022, uh, and also for the affordable housing, the the benefits have been extended till March 2022. Well, uh, that's that's a fantastic thing for uh, a tier two, tier three cities. Uh, I don't know whether uh, that is going to make any difference in the tier one real estate uh, development, because we do not see uh, too many affordable housing developments in in tier one. Now, while I said that you know the expectation was totally different and nothing has happened, uh, if those things would have happened, uh, probably the developers would have been able to slash their prices and clear the unsold inventories. None of these, those things have happened. I don't know how the, the uh, sector is going to to improve or leverage on this budget. Again, we'll talk about specifics. I'll go back to you, uh, Ajay. Uh, specifics on the infrastructure which you think will bring in uh, the flow of money into the sector and which will speed things up in terms of building infrastructure. See, my, uh, my assumption around the borrowing going up, uh, 
uh, you know, which is a very aggressive position the government has taken, and, and in fact, the finance minister has taken, and we were speaking about in the morning. I think maximum part of that is going to be for uh, capital expenditure. That's first. a very good point. I'll uh, talk about it as yeah. That's that's going to be for capital expenditure and mostly not going to be for revenue expenditure. You see the divestment program, which is uh, now being spoken about in almost all all the channels right now. Uh, that also builds up the corpus of the government. And I, as I said in the morning, that you know, uh, it's time when government will have to put up their money first to attract more private investment into into the infrastructure sector. It, it's got a multiplier effect. You see, it's it's just not uh, you put into infrastructure and and that's about it. You have Im you have employment growth. You have uh, you have last mile linkages build up, which then affects ev every point of economy. You know whether it's manufacturing, whether it's agriculture. You're giving that last mile connectivity through infrastructure. And as I as I always say, it's, it's just not uh, how you build up the factories or the manufacturing units. It's how you work outside the gates to make sure that you are you're delivering your goods right. So. Uh, with a robust infrastructure, you have good last mile connectivity in it, and I, 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 I do feel that there will be more DTAs on the agriculture side or you know the manufacturing side to put us uh, on the global map as as a as a leader in in supply chain uh, at at some point of time. Uh, so I think, as I said, overall, you know, it's it's how this is implemented now, you know. So the the, the blueprints there. But the as I said, the devil lies in the detail of the you know implementation of this entire thing. And if if well implemented, uh, I think this worry around the physical deficit could could be put behind us because uh, we are actually planning to grow at a rapid pace, uh, sure. and this will shrink. Sure, but then you spoke about borrowing and fiscal deficit also. Uh, borrowing target uh, it's more than one lakh crore per month if I uh, my calculations are correct. Um, so yeah, it's about eighty-eight thousand. If I uh, okay, that, um, yeah. pretty ambitious target. Um, and uh, whatever we say about maybe future growth coming in, uh, that does put us in a spot uh, with a so heavy borrowing. Uh, the cost of uh, capital raising for uh, corporations uh, go up. Uh, it, there is a crowding out which happens. So is it sustainable to borrow that much money? And then second thing. Um, Disinvestment also is a pretty ambitious target uh, at 1.75 lakh crore. Uh, uh, we have uh, traditionally uh, not met our disinvestment targets. Uh, so let me let me just uh, put it a different way. Uh, you know we are not in a situation where you actually burden the taxpayers mm -hmm. to build. Uh, you know the requirements of infrastructure. Uh, the the common man's happy. Uh, the the industries are happy with the fact that it's. The, the tax regime has just been maintained as it was, you know, there is there is no COVID cess, there are no further additional cess, the tax rates have not gone up. You have to see the linkage between how the government is planning to raise the funds to deploy in, you know, uh, the growth. Uh, it is aggressive, it is aggressive, but uh, also if you see for last two and a half decades, uh, our debt to GDP uh, has always been uh, manageable it's always been less it's it's never put us in a certain position you know that's that's and i think you were discussing at some point of time ratings as well me, with me in the morning and i, I think these are these are projections to be very honest mm -hmm. you know uh, we have as an economy in the past demonstrated that our debt to gdp is less uh, we have come out of uh, you know a physical deficits of a higher number we we've, we've jumped on our gdp growth from 2004 onwards and that's a consistent approach that we've shown so i i think yes it, the number seems big uh, it seems aggressive but i think it's the right decision right now uh, because you're not paying you're not burdening the taxpayers more for the growth uh, and i i think uh, while the tax uh, revenue uh, or would would remain the same towards the government side, uh, they don't have much options as well, other than you know taking support from external sources. Uh, I think the other sources probably one we one we discussed is going to be divestment. It could possibly be uh, you know again then uh, sale of spectrum where I see some more money coming in this year, and the last option left is divestment. Uh, the dividends from the banks. Uh, which uh, even if I think would flow in would not be to such a high number this year owing to the situation of the banks. So uh, whether we like it or we don't like it, uh, borrowing from external sources, divestment 
and couple of more uh, you know uh, situations at the hand of the government are the only real sources of generating revenue and i think it's the this is the correct approach of uh, borrowing and building rather than you know uh, burdening your existing citizens in such a situation by changing tax slabs uh, uh, which i i don't think so would have been the correct decision so i'm i'm i am quite happy with the decision of going with aggressive borrowing because i somehow feel looking at uh, you know the econ- uh, the survey as well uh, we as a economy have traditionally managed such a situation i think we'll be able to manage this situation especially when the gdp numbers being projected at a, a certain position in the coming years that's interesting about gdp number see gdp number whatever uh, the projection is it will still bring us back to where we are we, where we were one year ago uh, it's not like we are growing by leaps and bounds over the last year it's uh, just that uh, we are coming back to the uh, normal trajectory uh, i don't know if the expectation is that uh, we'll grow leaps and bounds the the problem is that we have been through a, we have we've been through a very bad year we've hmm. seen a contraction you know uh, and i was reading something even day before yesterday you can't see multiplier effect in the gdp after seeing such a contraction uh, you know whether it's whether it's the element of citizens or whether it's the element of government and it's across the world if you go through such a uh, you know uh, black swan event uh, you the government as well as the citizens need to be patient we'll we'll probably get to a gdp number which would be leaps and bounds but i think uh, it has to be strategically put through short term medium term and long term uh, you know growth path uh, I, I, as I say, you know, as as, as pe- people would understand, Rome was not built in a day. So therefore, the GDP numbers will not reach those uh, uh, escalations uh, that are expected out of this country uh, within a year or two. I think this was about uh, reposing confidence in the country, which has been done, uh, but subject to the caveat that you know, final print still needs to be out, implementation still needs to be done. but uh, overall as i said a very positive budget and i think probably uh, we will see the effects uh, of positivity in, in in the coming months as well as coming years there were a uh, lot of provisions uh, for uh, invits and reits as well and i want uh, both of your answers on that uh, uh, if you could explain to us what has the government done to make invits and reits uh, more attractive for both issuers and uh, for uh, uh, for investors see in bit of uh, in bit as a instrument uh, is now predominantly established i think we've got nine of them and uh, abilash would speak about the reits uh, we are we are in the process of having some more in bits coming out in fact if you heard today uh, some assets being rolled out by nhi into in bits and you know bgci are rolling out some of its assets into in bit it's better governance it's uh, it's uh, 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 it's uh, good funding with uh, confirmed returns over a certain period of time you know it's a larger investor base uh, and i think it's a very positive move of letting fpis uh, come into invits it's it broadens up the whole uh, debt source base for invits uh, i think from uh, it's another instrument uh, which is different from what the traditional instruments have been and i think it adds on to your area of play when uh, debt is required for these infrastructure projects sure uh, we uh, what has the government done today to make it even more attractive than uh, whatever it is so see the i think there is an alignment of you know the sebi fpi regulations and sebi reit and invit regulations which is what has happened you know you uh, fpis would be uh, able to invest i think uh, from a tax perspective uh, the uh, the Do dividends it. will yes. not be uh tax in the hands of uh, you know the so the okay. invits get that just to clarify that is uh, the dividend the part is only on in case of reits and not invits right invits as well uh okay sure please go ahead so i think uh, that's that's what has happened today uh, on invits and uh, you know as as i said abilash would speak for reits but it it opens another avenue it broadens your source of debt for uh, you know these projects especially uh when uh, you know you have these large platforms doing in which which have a you know multiple project base it's as i say it's more revenue for raising debt are it is so yes similarly so both rates and invits if we put it in a uh, single word uh, these are uh, largely clean assets with uh, a great amount of liquidity right so in the current budget what they are uh, proposing is that you can raise debt 
for uh, acquiring more assets and putting it on trades. So that is going to see a, a, a great amount of growth in REITs. And uh, the dividend proposal, uh, will that make uh, REITs inherently more attractive to the investors? Hopefully, hopefully that is going to be the case. Uh, let's see the fine print uh, on, on tax that what is being proposed. But I believe that that is not going to be taxable in the hands of the unit holders. That actually brings me to the outlook on uh, real estate. Now, um, commercial real estate, does it have the same outlook for next few years as it did have a couple of years back, considering that work from home culture has now seeped in pretty deep into the uh, society? Uh, so, what is your outlook on REITs that way? Well, uh, we we are uh, we have adapted uh, the work from home policy very quickly. But uh, being a community, especially in our country, we will always want to go back to the the society uh, offices. So uh, I would see uh, that this will not dampen the the entire commercial uh, commercial leasing business. And two things which I would like to mention: one is uh, the government is going to monetize their surplus land available with this P CPSCs and PSUs. That will free out a lot of uh, mixed-use land available in the tier 1, tier 2 cities where uh, one can easily pick up because they are largely clean title land without uh, any litigations or encumbrances. That will give the, the developers who have deeper pockets to acquire those land and develop mixed-use development over this land. So as a result of that, the commercial leasing business will, will grow, certainly grow. Secondly. On the on the REITs aspect, we have seen that the both the the, the REITs uh, were successful, and uh, the, uh, the the investors have tasted the the uh, the success of of REITs. So it is going to happen uh, more, and we can see that towards uh, towards uh, towards this REITs or this investment um, asset class, all the developers or all the developers and the funds are working uh, working together on this. Uh, currently, the, the major issue which we are facing in our country is that we don't have uh, 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 probably more than 40 percentage uh, of, of clean assets. That's the biggest issue which, which we were facing in terms of title or in terms of approvals or in terms of completion or whether it is an A-grade uh, uh, development or not. So in the recent past, probably in one and a half years what we have seen is that people are working towards that because they, they've realized that the REITs is a successful mechanism which we, which they can list on and they can actually uh, leverage and monetize on. So we will see more uh, REITs listing happening in the country. And uh, it will still make uh, as attractive an investment uh, avenue for investors? Uh... Certainly. I, I believe that. See, when it comes to real estate, two things uh, I keep in my mind. One is uh, uh, the sentiments and the other one is an emotion. Right. Uh, in in see uh, in our country, why do we invest in real estate? Because we do not have a uh, you know uh, culture of equity, culture of equity or a social security, those kind of things. The real estate is always considered as an asset which we can invest and monetize as and when it is required. So that's that's seen as a as a probably a, a retirement. Uh, but the REIT just takes benefit. away that from right. you. REIT does not give a, give you a piece of land where you can you know drive down your children. To see, uh, uh, see uh, till wherever I goes, and that's our real estate. I think we it's have moved like on from there. Uh, we have moved on from there because more the people are more concerned about the liquidity now. Mm -hmm. So they are really not concerned about you know the touch and feel of that that asset. They need no, they need the liquidity now. So so far as you have the units in your hand and you can liquidate that in the market, and those are uh, rent yielding or income yielding assets. The investor is happy. That was the, the parameter which they uh, used when they subscribed to the first REITs of Embassy, right? Because it was offering more liquidity. They, the, the investors realized that all the portfolios are rent generating portfolios. So there's not going to be an issue. Uh, well, in, in the work from home uh, situation during the, the pandemic, uh, some of the assets were affected because uh, there was a, a disruption in the rent payment and the, the other aspects. But uh, largely that has been managed by the developers uh, uh, themselves with, with the tenants. So that's even in the existing REIT. Even in the, correct. Mm. So that's, that's not uh, creating a huge impact in the market. Uh, so 
so far as breeds and inmates yes, he is expert on that and so far as reeds is concerned uh, i would say that that's a clean asset with lot of liquidity so th that's that's actually an investor's preference mm -hmm. it's going to be here acha infrastructure what the government could have done which it not took today I actually can't think about anything what government could have not done because honestly, as no, I said, we have hundred lakh crore. Uh, uh, so as I said, you know, the fine print still not out. To be mm -hmm. very honest, you know, the the statements made are very positive. You know, the nitpicking, as I would call it, on what government <laughs> could have delivered better or should have delivered better, can only be assessed once the plan goes down on implementation. Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, See, every sector had a lot of asks. So, uh, you know, if you if you see the ask of sectors, every sector was requesting for a you know GST exemption, you know, a land allocation, and couple of other things. And in it's across the sector. Whether you're looking at renewable energy, whether you're looking at power, it was about uh, you know uh, monetize uh, sort of uh, strengthening up the discoms, uh, augmenting the transmission lines. So. each sector had asked you know there was asked from airport sector there was asked from road sector to give tax holidays or there were uh, there were requests made to uh, you know sort of uh, give more incentive by reducing the gst giving some concessions uh, i as you as you asked me you know uh, what could have been done so there's uh, with us there's always something more could have been done right but i think the situation and the uh, with on on the government's hand right now uh, is government's in a particular situation right now and i think they've done for well for whatever situation they are in i think as abhilash was mentioning on on the real estate side lot of asks were there and some of them have not got fulfilled they could be they could be fulfilled down the line another 6 months 8 months it could be uh, you know next budget uh, so i think right now coming out of the situation we are uh, and you know the hope that has been given to the sector and as i say the hope to infrastructure sector is also the hope to other sectors you know uh, as i said it's 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 got a multiplier effect it's got it's got the ability to give employment yes uh, ability to put you on a larger pedestal globally by uh, you know augmenting your logistics your last mile connections you know uh, so i think uh, it would be tested now in next few months how all this is implemented and what all has been lacked in the budget uh, in true sense uh, right now as i said look at the ma market sentiment you know yes. uh, the stock markets are rallying you know i think uh, what's left can be assessed in some time but i i honestly think a uh, lot of things could have been left but in a particular situation this is the best the government could have done and and they've done well with this budget i will ask closing comments not really a budget question but since you're here um uh, real estate uh, you talked about unsold inventory now that we have seen that uh, the government did not do uh, uh, you know much of the asks uh, did not provide for uh, what could the developers do over the next few months or year to clear that unsold inventory to get the money flowing to get the cash flowing I think uh, two things which uh, government can consider. One is, uh, you know, you you are aware of the Samim Fund, right? Which is a last mile fund which is being given to the the developers. So probably they can uh, 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 tone down the the restrictions or regulations uh, under which you can apply for the the last mile funding. My question was uh, from the point of view of what the developers could do themselves, if uh, considering that. Uh, Uh, such help is not forthcoming from the government well they will have to uh, do do the licensing with the government probably through nadco or uh, or or the, the state real estate councils and uh, i am sure that th that will yield the result piyush goel made a statement uh, in a short video clip which uh, went viral that uh, uh, developers you are essentially on their own uh, you have to uh, do whatever you do by way of pricing because uh, the government is not going to come and bill you out um i'm sure you're aware of that correct okay that's correct so uh, that sentiment is still there can the de developers do something with the pricing to clear the unsold inventory there is certainly uh, you know sufficient headroom for reducing the prices if if they reduce the price uh, there will be a lot of sales which will happen uh, and in that case it will improve uh, two things one is the the larger liquidity with the developer which they can use for completing the other projects as well mm -hmm. 
and secondly it will ensure that you will be completing lot more projects and it will uh, it will give you lot more benefits uh, from the government side as well this question incidentally is tied into a uh, real estate pricing for consumers so uh, that's where i'm coming from uh, trying to understand whether uh, home buyers can expect uh, cheaper homes or the price is not to rise too much uh, this year well i do not see the price is going up mm-hmm. uh, that that's certainly not not happening um, uh, and we should uh, we are talking about the affordable uh, housing sector or or the or the middle segment sector we are not talking about the luxury sector okay and why not uh, yeah, because the luxury sector what we have seen the trend is that they are completing the asset and then handing it over to the the buyers mm-hmm. or the end customers so there you can actually charge the premium and that there i don't see any uh, any reduction going to happen but certainly in the mid segment and the affordable housing mm-hmm. sector i expect the prices to come down because there is there is there is enough uh, benefits there but uh, same time the government will also have to ensure that they will reduce the the gst impact on on these kind of aspects especially on the cement and the secondly on the the commercial development if you have 15% commercial development and residential uh, development then your gst impact is different okay so the right now the gst is uh, exempted for the the residential sectors if it is ready to move in okay well you okay. will have to consider you know to give some kind of a tax holiday for 2 years 3 years so that these developers can complete it mm-hmm. and sell their unsold inventories if you look at uh, in in noida itself that there's a huge inventory which is which is lying uh, available with the developers that will have to be a joint uh, and and a collaborative effort effort between uh, the ministry uh, mhud and uh, nadco and, uh, and and the developers uh, to clear this mess we are ending this on a happy note uh, the prices of real estate are not going up and infrastructure there is nothing that you can think of that the government did not do uh, abhilash ajay uh, thank you very much for being with us uh, it was a pleasure hosting you thank you so much thank you for having us over thank you shalin thank you